Hey, pleasant good day, everybody. This is Joe Borg, and this is going to be my third quick video for the Flyers Nitty Gritty Team's YouTube page. As we are back, it is the summer of grit. It starts today as the Flyers are back at 3 o'clock, count it, as we play the Boston Bruins. And from reading a Boston Globe article that came out this morning, and they re released it, uh, they released it on their Twitter six minutes ago. But it's dated last night at about 6.30 p.m. That Marshand and Andre Kase are back. But Rayescu dealt with a broken finger. Also dealt with a illness yesterday. But obviously it seems like that's not COVID. Because they think he's, he's a game time decision today. So that wouldn't be the case. So the... I think... He's a guy that's going to be a game-time decision, whether he would play or not. I saw Jamie put out on Twitter that he thinks he'll play. Um, I'm not entirely 100% certain he will play because I've read a decent amount of things that said he was held out and he had a broken finger also in camp on top of if he has had a some issue not feeling as good, kind of like Hosmer did in baseball where he had actually some regular sickness and some people on Twitter freaked out thinking it was the virus, obviously. If that's something Rask has, it is the round robin. And like a lot of teams said, they want to win these games, but they also want to use them to get in tune and play the the bulldog, bulldog style of hockey Excuse me, that you have to play once you get into the series compared to just one for one in a round robin. So I feel like Cassidy's not going to want to over push to put Rask in just for a round robin game even though it's against us who they didn't play well against this year. They were only 1-2 and two against us. We were 2-1 and one against the Bruins, of course. And the only time they beat us was with two. So that's the, but that's the only reason you would try to push to put them in, but then the argument becomes it's the round robin over the actual series. So obviously Boston doesn't want to harm their goaltender by having him get injured if they, if they put him in early when he's not really ready because of being held out of practice and having the finger thing on top of not feeling great. You don't want to over push it when, like Cassidy said, Yari Halak's ready. The thing is, if Yari Halak goes, I think he's a very good goalie and one of the better backups in the league. Problem is, we're about to start the summer of grit. We've looked great, and we've looked great against Yari Halak all entire season. So if, if he's in, there's no question in my mind we're definitely going to win this game against Boston. And I think it'll be a more magnitude of a scoring game because we just play like a very confident bunch. We know we have his number. And when you know you have a goalie's number, you play like a very confident bunch in front of them. That's exactly what we do in front, or excuse me, that's exactly what we do trying to score on Yari Halak, not in front of Yari Halak, obviously. We play in the offensive zone, immensely better when we play Halak. Obviously, it's a difference of a Vezina Trophy candidate to a very solid backup, but Halak's number-wise is one of the best backups in hockey. It's just he doesn't do good against us. For whatever reason, we've always had his number. And that's going to continue today, in my opinion, as long as he plays. Now, if Tuka Rask plays, then... That changes things, obviously, because he we outplayed them the final game of the season, which is the game that this is coming into that the Flyers are going to be wanting to get revenge for. The fact that the one of the games that the Flyers lost, which there was quite a handful of them this year, that they outshot and outplayed the opponent was the final game of our regular draw, which was against the Boston Bruins, which was a game that Tuka Reyes played like his Vezina self and said, no, you guys ain't scoring today. I'm just stopping everything like a brick wall. That's literally the reason the Flyers lost that last game of the season. So obviously, Tuke, as the guy that's probably going to win the Vezina, other than that, it would be Connor Hellbuck. And then Bazzi's third, but I don't think Bazzi's going to win this year because Tuke had an astronomical season and Hellbuck faced an onslaught of shots daily. So that is just by the numbers. Other than that, Bazzi had a phenomenal season as well. But Tuke is a guy you have to be able to get a lot of net front presence so the Flyers are going to have to really, they played it solid in the last game against Boston, but they're going to have to really up the ante in front of the net if Tuke's able to go. You're going to have to have JVR become a lot more in presence in front of the net and just kind of, like he sometimes does, not camp there, but be there, set up for the deflection, 
have Pitlick be that scrappy guy in front of the net, have Knack look as comfortable as he's looked, have Waltz look as comfortable as he's looked. Because obviously those guys don't just have some skill, they also have peskiness and fire to their game. And then you have Teeks, but but I'm talking about we need some guys like that if Fairby plays, uh, guys in front of the net to be able to give our possession numbers up. You need to possess the puck a lot like we did last game, obviously, against the Bruins because you don't want to give Marshan, who's back, Bergeron, and all those guys a chance to possess the puck and get something going themselves. You got to be able to possess the puck on your end so that you can run your offense and be able to play efficient. Because obviously last game, we lost the one game we lost to the Bruins. It wasn't because of our play not being efficient. It was because of Tuka Rask having potentially in a Vezina winning season, his best night of the season. And that's something saying in the statistical season he had. But he had definitely one of his best nights of the season against us. But this has been a quick video looking into the Boston game. I personally believe even if Tuke plays, we are still going to win this game. I just think it'll be a close about 3-2, 4-2 to two, four to, four to two game with an empty net goal at the end. If we win in that facet, I think we could honestly win 5-2 to two or by like three goals where the empty net goal gives us a third winning by three or we're up by three and we win by four if they still decide to pull the goalie. If Halak plays, and it's nothing against Yari, it's just we have his number, and like I said, when teams have somebody's numbers, it seems to just keep being the case. So I personally believe Yari Halak will be a guy that won't be able to stop the rubber with us like he normally isn't, and will be able to get goals on him. Now, Tuk, Tuk always can stop the rubber, so that'll be a tough 3-2, maybe even a 2-1 win, I believe, if we get that win, but we will still be able to get that win. Well, anyway, Flyers hockey is back, baby. We are back. It is the summer of grit. We are ready to fight for that Stanley Cup. Have a great day, everybody. Peace out for Joe Boric from the Flyers Nitty Gritty team. I am Joe Boric, and have a great and pleasant day, everybody. Enjoy all the great hockey. There were so many fantastic games yesterday. One that went into overtime. It was phenomenal. Fabulous. Have a great day, everybody. Peace out.